So welcome back to the shop friends. I have got another exciting video for you today. We're going to be installing a US Forest Service approved dirt bike silencer and a bomb proof GPS mount to the Husqvarna 300. So this right here is the stock silencer on the bike. It's essentially like a muffler. It's got a packing inside of it. It quiets everything down. Now, the problem is, I'm happy with this. I would leave this, I would never take it off, but it's illegal to run it in the, in the in national forest. You have to have what they call a spark arrester, which is a baffle system put inside of these things uh, that prevents any spark from coming out and, and starting a wildland fire. And you know, funny thing is, I remember the first time I, got, I had my bike checked for this one time, uh, we uh, got pulled over. We were riding in the Tillamook Forest uh, by a, I think it was a state cop, on a dirt bike, in a full dirt bike gear. We thought he was a fellow rider, but he stopped us and he checked our bikes for spark arresters. And how he did it was he had a, a rod of some sort and he put it into the tube, into the back of everyone's dirt bike to see that they were indeed in compliance. So a factory muffler is not in compliance. So what you have to do if you're gonna be riding in the forest, you have to put a spark arrester type of muffler. And that's what this one is here. Now, if you see the difference, when I put in, screwdriver won't go in. This has a spark arrestor in it. So let's, uh, let's go about, see if we can install it. It should be a simple job. So here's a close-up look at the silencer. This is a FMF Turbo, Turbo Core 2.1. Turbo Core meaning it has the, has the baffle inside. Right there it says, uh, spark arrestor, US Forest Service approved. They gave us uh, mounting hardware. Great company, FMF made everything made in America, down in SoCal, California. They've been making these things forever and uh, hopefully it'll be a perfect fit. Oh, and I forgot to mention, here's the components for the, uh, the GPS mount. Uh, I think I showed you the cradle last time, but this is the hand handlebar clamp and the ball and all that, so we'll put that on next. But as always, we're gonna be working out of our tool kit. Remember, uh, always working out of your tool kit that you're gonna carry on your bike is gonna show you any deficiencies that you have um, in, in your, if you need to do a repair in the field. So to get to that, we're gonna have to take the body panels off and the seat which is pretty simple you just pull out here and here and that comes off there we got one bolt for the seat what's really cool about the majority of bolts that they put on here is it has a torx on the inside and a regular hex on the outside so if you strip one out or you you could use it with two different wrenches and this should just pull back like that you can spin it around and get to the other side. Looks like we've got a bolt over here to take this cover off. I'll tell you what, if you're opposed to the metric system, this bike is your worst nightmare because it is metric. All right, let's see here. Haven't had this cover off yet. Oh yeah, that's gonna be easy to get to. Good grief, I nearly forgot. We need to do a sound check, what it sounds like before with the stock muffler and after. Let me put my good mic on that. So I think this is gonna be even easier than I was expecting. Whenever I work on cars and motorcycles, it always reminds me, I always think back when I was little, working in my granddad's shop. Uh, and uh, he, he told me so many stories, all these stories come to mind, some of them I've shared with you in the past. But uh, granddad was in the uh, World War II in the Air Corps. This was back in the, back in the day, there wasn't an Air Force. The uh, aircraft were rolled into the Army the army controlled it and it was called the, I believe it's called the Air Corps. He was uh, based in, um, stationed in Africa with the B-24 Liberators, the, bomb, the big bombers. Um, and he, uh, you know, when they were, when they had off time, you know, they would help the mechanics, you know, that would, they'd do sheet metal work, you know, patch up stuff and change engines and all those things that, you know, needed to be done. I think that that just comes out like that. Well, how simple. And uh, he was telling me that, uh, uh, they ne pilots, uh, they, or mechanics never made good pilots. And, uh, and, and the, the rationale on that was, um, let's take this over and I'll f finish the story. So I was saying that the, they, said, they figured that the pilots, uh, or the mechanics didn't make very good pilots because they understood engines. They understood what a red line was, how far you could push an engine. 
where the, uh, the guys that didn't have a mechanical background, uh, they didn't know, care about any of that. All they knew is that when they were being shot at, uh, that they would, uh, they'd run that thing to the red line and beyond to get away or to, to, to whatever they needed to do where they always, the Army always felt at that time the mechanics uh, knowing uh, that they were pushing the engine so far uh, would be unlikely or unwilling uh, to do that so much as someone that was completely young and ignorant. I was not, that was, well, war is not funny, but I always thought that was a funny story. Uh, another thing he said that they did to, to, to encourage a... a uh, uh, a good work, work uh, quality, a standard of quality, is that it, when a mechanic put in, hung a new engine on one of those bombers, uh, he had to go up in the test flight, <laughs> so, <laughs> which is a really good system, you know, because uh, he might have been having an off day or, you know, cut some, cut some quarters and thought, well, you know, I, it's not, not my problem. I'm not going up in the thing. He knew that he was going up in it, and so he was uh, properly motivated to... Uh, to do a good job. Okay, here. So this is a this is really a clever clamp. It doesn't have any uh, fasteners or anything on it. It just has got the the spring tension. Two of my well, this one here. One of my some of my favorite tools. I used to own a wrecking yard, so I took apart lots and lots of vehicles. <laughs> and so, so so I th that's why I've uh, I've got some tools that I've that I have acquired that I've learned from that. And one of them is this, this little, you, lots of people make, I don't even know what they're for, maybe an O-ring pick or something, but this particular one here from Snap-on is great. And so is this one right here. This one is made for pulling radiator hoses. I think it is, that's what I used it for. Or heater core ho hoses off of heater cores. You know when the, the rubber is pushed up against that little nipple, right against the firewall, and you, you know you can't get on it when it gets stuck. This, the way it's shaped, you can take this and you can hook it underneath there, you know, like this without, you know, you don't want to damage it, but to, you can go back and forth like that and break that seal and then use it to pull it off. And that right there has saved me countless, countless hours. But, uh, but often when, you, when you're removing a, a, a rubber, any sort of a rubber hose from steel, especially if it's been on for some time, uh, don't poke a hole in it, of course. You know, keep a little bit of down angle on there, but you can go around and kind of free that up and... Uh, and help to get that off uh, without ruining anything that should come off there. All right, so that's, boy, that couldn't be simpler right there. One thing else, else I learned on these is you can, uh, I wonder if I should, no, that went on there really good, uh, that you can repack these with, with, they actually, they recommend repacking it every 10 hours. It's like, yeah, that's gonna happen, right? Um, but you, maybe once a year I might think about doing it. All right, so that's on there. Well, let's go uh, see how it installs. I forgot to show you this part here. So you've got to put these rubber, these rubber grommets in there. I've got another tip for you. I'm just fully useful tips today, huh? Uh, so when you're doing this, when you're putting these type of things in, these are oftentimes you find these isolators and firewalls or floors and stuff. The first thing you have a tendency you want to do, you're going to go grab yourself a, a regular screwdriver, right? We've all done it, flat blade screwdriver. And then it's going to slip off of there and it's going to go in your hand and you're going to be very cross. Uh, so, and, you're going to, and you're going to dig a big hole in your, uh, in your ground. One thing you can do is use your quarter inch drive uh, little handle. You should have one of these or something similar to that. What it, it will do the same thing, um, but it's blunt enough where it won't, uh, it won't sever your thumb and it won't uh, damage your uh, rubber grommet. And it works, I, I use these all the time and, the, and it works just fine, does the same job right there and uh, without all of the risk. I lock tight everything on these bikes uh, for the most part. What's kind of cool is on the, on, in the manual, it tells you all the torque specs. You know, you can flip to the page where, you know, working on the chassis or whatever, and it gives you how tight to tighten every bolt. Um, and also it gives you which, lock, which brand of Loctite to use. Uh, so like most of it's all 243, there's some 2701 and stuff. So I'll, the 2403 is pretty much the standard one that I like. Uh, that's the blue one, I believe. Did I take that out already? Yes, I had it over here. Is that the 243? 243? Yeah, the 243. That's the blue one. That's the one that we'll use. I'll, I'll use that on this one. That's the one that's not too hard to get off. All right, FMF, we're going to see how good this thing fits. I'm not a big sticker guy. I don't particularly like stickers. Um, I'm going to take that sticker off. Is it going to be the type that leaves... Tell me it's not going to be the type that leaves the sticky on there. Oh, I hate, I hate that. That's one of the worst things in life is when you, 
want to pull a sticker off of something and it leaves an adhesive behind it. Well, this one, if I can get it, I don't think it's going to. It's coming off there clean, but it's tearing a little bit. I probably should have warmed it up a little bit. Let's try this other side here. When you want to get stickers off, heat your friend. This little heater, my dad gave this to me years ago, has been, so, it's really nice in a shop. If you have a shop like this big one here that's impossible to heat uh, because of just the size of it and it's, you know, it's full of holes, it's very porous. Uh, even with the wood, wood stove going, you know, it just doesn't really do any good. So when it's really cold like it is today, when it's in the 30s or so, um, just having this little thing on your workbench, it's just kind of aiming in your general direction, is really wonderful um, to keep your hands and, and such warm uh, for different things. But if you don't, uh, if you have a sticker like this you want to take off, just take it inside, warm it up, or a heat gun or your wife's hair blower, well, look, look at the difference, you know, when I just put the heat on there just for a minute or two, you know, now that's coming off and not tearing on me and leaving no sticky behind. We're not racers here. We don't need to have sponsorship stickers just plastered all over everything, do we? Boy, the dirt biking stuff, man, it's loud. I mean, in the design and everything, the graphics and all that, it's just so over the top. It's kind of embarrassing. All right, FMF, let's see how well you designed this. We're gonna fit. Boy, this is, it's such a, it's so fun working on motorcycles because after working on cars, because everything's so small and easy, easy to work with. Look at that, that lines up perfectly. That's actually a lot better than that hokey mount. You saw that other mount, right? That had that kind of that plastic deal on there. Every time I looked at that, I thought, well, that looks a little, that looks a little bit odd. We'll put our, a little bit of our 243 on there, blue Loctite. That's also the same Loctite that I use on um, any time you're Loctiting stuff on your gun, you know, accessories and stuff you wanna. I'd probably, I, I've avoided using the red. I've made that mistake a few times. The blue, I've never had anything with the blue come off. Okay. Got my little torque wrench. I had to buy two torque wrenches. I bought a 3 8 drive torque wrench, which I showed you the other day. And then I've got, uh, I, I need something that, that only goes the minimum of 10 pounds. And there's some things in the book. I think this is probably one of them. This, the torque spec on this is seven pounds. And it wouldn't go that low. So I ordered a, um, a quarter inch drive one that will, is in inch pounds uh, for that smaller stuff. Yeah. You know, the funny thing is, years ago, I would bought a bike like this and and I would throw in the manual away, you know, like, oh, I, you know, nobody tells me nothing. I know, I know how to do all this stuff. And now I'm like, I, a part of the, the enjoyment of it is, is doing everything really nice, you know. So I, I, re, I go through the book, you know, they give you instructions on how to do everything with pictures and the sequence. That's the most important thing, which bolts to take loose and all of that. And, and if you don't do it right, sometimes you can break things or, or just not do it. It won't be correct. Um, and it gives you all the torque specs. And I, I kind of enjoy that side of it to, you know, putting everything back. And it does give you peace of mind when you're ripping down the road at 70 miles an hour, knowing that your front tires is torqued to the right spec and not going to come loose. I wanted to show you those torque wrenches I got too. So this is the, this is the three eighths drive here. And then this is the quarter. Now, uh, the three eighths drive, it goes to down to 10 inch pounds. I just got, the, these are, this one's, Tecton, it's the same brand. I mean, they're, they're on Amazon. I, I just can't justify the spending, I, I can't, you know, like a Snap-on or a professional grade torque wrench because I just don't use it all that time. And so these had really good reviews and they're like in the $25, $30 price range. So uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty hard to beat for the, you know, the shade tree type of guy. But uh, this one's the three eighths and this one goes uh, up to seven, 80, 80 foot pounds. This one's in inch pounds. Uh, so it, and it's a quarter inch. It's smaller. So what your the book when it calls like the book right here for these particular bolt, bolts, right? Uh, those muffler bolts, uh, seven point four foot pounds. So we can just round it up to seven point five, right? So how you make that conversion is really simple. There are twelve inch pounds uh, for one foot pound. So when you see the book, when you say see it's seven, you go seven times twelve. That's eighty four, right? Uh, plus, a, you know, 84 plus 6, so that's 90, 92. Uh, so let's just say 90 inch pounds. Um, man, here, I, I've done math. I've done math on, on the intranets. Good grief, I know better than to do math on, 
on camera. Okay, 90. That's what it was, 90. Man, my pub government run school public education haunts me to this day. Okay, 90. There we go. So torque wrench, if you don't know, it's um, uh, you dial it in, and then when you reach your the desired tightness, listen, it'll slip. There's a little little deal in there that presses. It's been calibrated, and you can check that, and that'll give you the, your, your exact torque. It's very satisfying. That that's one of the one of the it just it just gives you, me the fizz. I'd love to have bolts that are properly torqued. All right, let's do the sound test. Let's see how it, how it sounds. One more thing, don't forget, when you're done with your torque wrenches, back them off. Back them off to the lowest torque setting um, and that'll help them stay in, in the calibration. Well, that was a delightfully simple project. Uh, so you can see the difference between the two right here. Um, just aesthetically, the, the, this, the FMF looks much, much cooler. The, the opening is bigger. Um, I, I can't really say that I noticed any sound difference. I'll have to, in the post edit, I'll have to hear it like when you guys hear it to see side by side what they are, but it looks a lot better, doesn't it? It looks, it looks has it more square look? It looks more like a thumper. Uh, exhaust uh, than a two-stroke. It doesn't have those, um, I didn't, didn't really like that whole plastic mount system set up there, but uh, that's way better. We got that all uh, nice heavy aluminum mounts and now we're in compliance that the uh, Smokey the Bear can't, uh, can't give us any mischief uh, when we go out into the, to the Gifford this year. So, um, so there's one more thing that I did I'll show you that's really cool. I didn't do a video on it, but I'm really excited to try it out as soon as the snow melts. So what I did is I put a tubeless tire system on, on here. Now you, that you can see that there's the blue and the red caps there. This is the B, this is the rim lock. So on bikes, you know, unlike mountain bikes, you have so much power and torque that you can, if, if you don't lock the, the rear tire down to the rim, you can spin the wheel inside the tire. And what that does is shears off the valve stem and your tire goes flat. So they use something called a rim lock. Here's just the factory, this is the, the rubber plastic one. These are not, not super good. Uh, but what it does is as you tighten this down, you know, like this right here, this would be sticking through a hole. There's two holes through your rims. As you tighten that down, that squeezes down and pinches the tire into the rim, preventing it from spinning. Now you can tell if your wheels are spinning inside because your valve stem will start to bend over a little bit. So, uh, so that's what a rim lock is. And then that just runs with a traditional tube. This, this, the factory bikes come with these really thin tubes. You don't want these. If you, if you are gonna run tubes, you wanna run extra or extra, extra heavy duty ones. They're much, much thicker. They are heavy and that is spinning weight. And, you know, it makes a difference, but getting a pinch flat and having to fix a tire on a dirt bike on the trail is terrible. Uh, I've done it a couple times and it's horrible. It's horrible in your shop when you have all the tools. So no more of that. Uh, so this is, um, I, it, it took me a couple hours. It wasn't that bad, and I, I didn't do a video on it, but what it, what it essentially is, here you can kind of see from the picture, is that there's a, 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 a liner that goes inside that you pump up to 100 PSI. Yeah, I think I, 100 PSI tubeless chamber. I think I put mine up to 120. I better back that off. Uh, that uh, locks everything in and, and turns this into a tubeless tire. Now, why do you want to do that? couple reasons. You don't want, have to uh, run a tube and therefore you don't, are much less likely to get a pinch flat. Uh, meaning that the, that the tire compresses so much when you hit a rock that it pinches uh, the tube in between the rim and the tire. And, but the best thing about it is you can run extremely low pressures. The lower pressure you run with the tire on a bike, the better traction you get in some situations. So where, where you're going along where normally you're gonna have something that when you hit the front tire that it's going to deflect off like a rock or a stick. If you're running low pressure, sometimes it will go over that instead 
Plus, you're just going to have a bigger surface area as the tire mashes down. There are more knobbies and things that are grabbing onto, onto the, the terrain. And it's just, uh, it's a better, for, for this, where we ride and the type of riding that we do here, it, it is a must, almost a must have, unless you want to fix flats on the deal. So that's what that's all about. I think we're out of time for the GPS. So let's kick that up to the next video and we'll, I'll show you the mounting the GPS on. Um, and then let's wrap it up here. So I guess that's about all we have time for today's show. Um, stay tuned. I'll do, I'll do a quick video on that, to, on the GPS install. I think you might find that interesting because the mounting system is, is pretty applicable to pretty much any type of a vehicle or piece of equipment uh, that you might find. Stay tuned too. Coming up, I'm going to be a doing op an unboxing of the, remember the, my, my beloved Russian knife sharpener? The Mark II. The Mark II and new and improved, much improved, is out. This was a total surprise to me. They send it out to me. Um, I'm not affiliated with them at all. Uh, they sent me the original one. I've used, I used it. I love it so much. I actually built my knife sharpening cabinet around it because I use it all the time. Um, and then this showed up. So I'm excited. So we'll open this up together and see what's inside. But from what I hear, it's much, much improved. So that'll be fun. So, all right. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you guys on the next video. So you don't like dirt bike videos? Well, there's going to be a few. You know, as I've always done with this channel, and it's it's really important to, for this channel to even exist for me to to share with you guys what I'm doing, what I'm excited about, what's what I'm passionate about, because it comes through in the video. You can't um, you can't fake it. Well, and there may be people that that can, but I think it's few and far in between. I know when I'm watching a video of someone if they're doing something out of because they have to versus if they want to, and the topic and the whatever it is doesn't really matter so much. I it's fun to watch someone excited about something. So, you know, that's kind of that's kind of how I run the channel. Uh, another thing I want to address it it's been coming up a lot. It it has for a long time is a, a guys complaining about, "Man, I'm so sick and tired of your product placement in all of these videos. It's so obvious and, and it's just annoying to me." Well, first off, I don't do any product placement. Um, I have done some advertising videos, and at the beginning of every one of those videos, anything that I've gotten paid for, uh, I have made an announcement at the very beginning, this is a paid video. I did one uh, paid video for DeWalt for the FlexVolt video, and my opening sequence of that, my opening words was, hey, I want you guys to know that this is a paid video. I have been paid by DeWalt to make this video. That's the only thing that I've ever done for them uh, was back in the old shop, uh, FlexVolt videos. And so you see a lot of DeWalt stuff in the shop and all of that. Um, it's not product endorsement. It, it's... Um, it, it, it's uh, I have a lot of the stuff left over from that original uh, deal that we did, and I, and I continue to use them. You know, it's um, I guess it's it's kind of a, a certainly a fringe benefit for them, but it worked out for me too. Is, is I got some tools that I liked that I got to use, and and I'm going to have them for a long time, and they're going to be in the shop. Excuse me, that's Heart Racer. Um, but there is no product placement. Uh, these things that I'm sharing, or you know, the stuff from Amazon, I've never received any money from Amazon for any product placements. Um, I uh, run um, uh, Amazon affiliate links, um, and that's a, a way for us to to support the channel. Um, if someone wants to buy something that we featured in a video, and I'll, I put the link there, you know, we make a small percentage for that, and this helps us to cover the overhead and to keep doing what we're doing. But uh, just to clear the air, uh, there is no product placement, and if there is, if I'm being paid to do something, um, I will tell you, and I'll say it at the beginning of the video. The Yanmar stuff, for example, there's no. I've made no. Uh, no, I've never tried to hide the fact that Yanmar uh, has uh, supported our channel. Not financially. We've received no money from them, but they have given us equipment to use. And if you see me putting that tractor or the, that equipment in videos, if I'm standing by it, of course I'm going to do that. It's, it's for me, it's a thank you to them. I really appreciate, my family really appreciates uh, the risk that they took and how they've worked with us and what a wonderful company they are. And you better believe it that I'm going to um, I'm gonna help them out when I can. I believe in the product. I think it's the best tractor, compact tractor that money can buy. I love mine. Uh, and if there's anything wrong with it or something I don't like, I'll tell you. Um, I'm not beholden to them. Um, I can be completely objective, and they understood that when we went into our deal, and, and, and that's the way it is. So um, there is no product placement. There is no paid endorsements uh, unless I tell you. I'll, if there are, I will tell you um, up front. So um, just to clear the air on that. All right. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next video.